Okay, so a bit over one week ago we had an overclocking event, a short one with Chokot over at the Aalto University down in Espoo in southern Finland at their Otaniemi campus. We uh, managed to get some like somewhat okay scores like uh, I first tested the uh, uh, dual core fan arms like would they uh, unlock the uh, unofficial cores and I managed to find one CPU that could do up to like 6.7 gigahertz range. Uh, I'm still working on it to improve the scores and I managed to get a rank 3 score in the Y Cruncher 1 billion with the 12900K, my first and original one, which is an engineering sample version. So uh, 12900K still dominates the 8 core category as it has, although un unofficially, AVX512 support. If you have a good enough motherboard, correct BIOS that has the old uh, microcode uh, versions included and if, it, if the CPU has the circle marking on top of the word Intel. This CPU has AVX512 support so uh, uh, I'm very close on the rank 1 score. The best score I actually saw was almost spot on 15 seconds like 15.005 but I didn't save it. I have it on my capture card somewhere but the highest score I submitted this far was like 15.03 something. The rank 1 score is by Splay from the United States at 14.96 something. Sorry, I'm a bit sick, so uh, my voice is not as normal, but doesn't really matter. So uh, now at home, I'm going to be uh, trying the uh, thing one more time with memory on LN2 as well, because it's definitely memory limited. I could run the test even at above 6.7 gigahertz. Uh, efficient clock speed, but it doesn't really help that much. Same thing for the cache. I tested the cache up to 6.5, nearly no, <laughs> nearly no difference whatsoever. The only thing that really uh, like like helps your score is the memory and especially memory frequency. Of course, you want to maintain good uh, latencies on the memory, but memory bandwidth is really what gives you the most in that test. So I will be giving it a very short go one more time. So uh, as I'm only like 60, is it like 60, 70 milliseconds away from the top score, I think I should be able to do it. So we just need a bit more on the memory and we should be very near the rank 1 score. Both safe disk and Splave are very close to each other in that ranking for the Y Cruncher 1 billion in 8 core category. So uh, yeah, so this will be probably the last bash of Z690 Dark Kingpin. Many of you might be asking why I'm not using the Z790. For some reason it cannot overclock the 12th gen CPUs correctly and the same thing goes for the Z690 board as well if you use two new BIOS. The best BIOS for these CPUs, Hynix ADI memory, is the last 12th gen BIOS which should be version 1.15. So if you want to run 1200K, KF, KS on LN2 with Hynix ADI memory on the Z690 Dark Kimbin, I really recommend you use the BIOS version 1.15. The new ones, they just start hanging, like very weird IMC instability once you go high enough on the clock speed. Usually the problem starts somewhere between 6 GHz and 6.7. So uh, we can't really use it, so I wasted a bit of LN2 trying to uh, uh, figure that out, but yeah, so that needs a BIOS update for the Z790 if we want to see high clock speeds on the Z790 as well on the 12th gen CPUs. But yeah, without further ado, I'll uh, get going. So uh, Z690 Dark Kimpin, two sticks of Hynix OEM green memory with bits power heat sinks, bits power LN2 container, T-Rex container for the CPU, KBX thermal paste, Galaxy 710 GT just to display the monitor signal and I'm using this cardboard packaging under the motherboard because uh, I cannot fit the uh, Elmore Labs heater plate with this 240 uh, radiator over here. So I'm using the second PSU for the Elmore Labs uh, heater plate as it covers the memory area as well. So uh, it really helps with the condensation on the memory. So uh, that's why it's actually a bit better than the Kimpin Cooling Inferno heater plate. And Superflower Lidex 8 pack 2000 watt platinum power supply powering this whole uh, system. But yeah, so I'll get going and I'll check the CPU first. Can we boot 
everything correctly, post like high enough memories, etc. And if it works all right, I'll start cooling down the memories as well. But yeah, let's see what happens and let's hope for the best. And okay, that's pretty much it. So it was actually quite funny. I managed to post and boot even DDR5 8600 like once and I managed to pass the white Runcer 1 billion uh, test at that memory frequency with CPU at 6.7 minus 1. So 6.6 .6 effective clock, but it hang when I opened the second CPU Z uh, window. I managed to capture that with the uh, uh, capture card. So that kind of shows how important memory frequency is on the Y Cruncher 1 billion test. So that score was 14.937, I think, at 6.6 uh, effective. And the previous rank one score was by Splave at 14.969 at like 6.76, I think, 6.7 something, close to 6.8 effective. So uh, it's very hard to improve. Uh, from this level. You definitely need the memory on LN2, you need to be able to run memory frequencies of like uh, 8400, 8500, even 8600, but it's very hard. These uh, 12th gen CPUs, they don't have as good IMC as the 13th gen CPUs. So uh, I still think there are CPUs out there in existence that can run higher memory than this engineering sample over here, but at least for now, this CPU is better than all of my uh, retail 12th gen CPUs, IMC wise, and even the and even core wise, to be honest. So uh, yeah, it's pretty hard, and it's the hard thing is about this whole uh, experience that uh, the whole rig and the memory overclocking experience is very inco uh, inconsistent. The first time you try, let's say, like uh, 8266. It will just fail altogether. It might fail already at post or it will be very unstable in the actual test. But after you try, let's say, 8200 and so on, and then you try 8266 again, it will work just fine. So it's very based on luck as well. For some reason now on this uh, attempt, I didn't have so good luck with the odd cast latency uh, 
uh, values. So far I had a bit better success with even values, but no big difference between the two. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So at least I managed to take down the previous rank 1 score by Splave at like 14.9, I don't remember, 14.93 something. And I got a few very nice rank 2 level scores like 14.974, 14 14.973, 972, something like this. So uh, yeah, we'll see if we get any better scores in the future. But at least for now, this is pretty much the good night moment for the EVGA Z690 Duck Kimpin. It was absolutely awesome to uh, revisit this muffle board like almost one year after or like eight months or nine months after using it uh, the very last time. So uh, uh, one year ago in the Corsair DDR5 Invitational uh, Overclocking Competition I could only run up to like 7200 common rate 1 in, in white runcer 1 billion and 7500-ish common rate 2 and now we are doing nearly 1000 mega transfers per second higher memory frequencies. The very same board IMC should be roughly the same as I already tested a few uh, retail 12900Ks as well so they are definitely better <coughs> with Hynix ADI so uh, that kind of proves that my issue during the competition was actually on the memory uh, stick so I didn't have that good luck with the uh, sticks I managed to get uh, from Debao, I think he was the guy who, who sent all the sticks, but anyways. So uh, this is pretty much the last top score and the last like uh, remaining valuable uh, test for the 12th gen architecture. So white runs are 1 billion, only due to AVX 512. Now uh, the only use case where you still can find the Z690 uh, useful is SLI because the Z790 ports they don't support SLI at the time of making this video only due to license thing so uh, they do support SLI at the hardware level but they are lacking some NVIDIA license so if you want to run SLI on the latest EVGA mainstream motherboards, boards you need to use the Z690 Dark Kimpin or the Classified so uh, that's probably the only use case for the Z690 board at the moment. So if you want to run, let's say, a two-way SLI, time spike extreme, daily use, whatever. So uh, <coughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. But again, if you still have the Z690 Dark Gimpin and you uh, you stick to 12th gen CPU, just go back to the BIOS 1.15 instead of the uh, 13th gen BIOS. The uh, 1.15 was a lot better than those uh, 13th gen pulses if you ask me. So uh, very good memory, rock solid IMC stability compared to the 13th gen pulses. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, this score will be uploaded to hardwarebot.org of course once again. So uh, definitely check it out if you are interested in this score and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and check out my Patreon page as well if you want to support my work and yeah. Thanks for watching one of my videos once again, and I will see you on the next one.